After the New York Times published their now infamous hit piece on Bernie Sanders, where they try to portray him as an anti-American, hippie, communist sympathizer who was against the United States' war in Vietnam, there's been this weird, I guess you could say, implication in the media that he was somehow wrong to oppose the Vietnam War and that he should apologize. So he was asked about that article in an interview with Chuck Todd and Meet the Press, and when they tweeted out his response, they worded it in a way that suggests that maybe Bernie Sanders should apologize. So this is what their tweet said. Bernie Sanders said he won't apologize for supporting anti-Vietnam War efforts and voting against the war in Iraq. Now, we already talked about this tweet on the show. I don't believe, or I don't think anyways, I'm not sure, that MSNBC in making this tweet or Meet the Press in making this tweet is explicitly suggesting that Bernie Sanders should apologize, but when you invoke the word apology and refuse to apologize, like, there's almost this feeling that, you know, maybe they should, right? Maybe they're culpable because you used the word apologize anyway. So if somebody won't apologize, that assumes that they're guilty in the first place. When Bernie Sanders has no culpability, he was in the right. Like, why would you apologize for being on the right side of history? So it's just, there's this weird underlying implication here that makes no sense to me. Nonetheless, Bernie Sanders has been using this to campaign, and I think, to his credit, it's been working out wonderfully. So he released this video on Twitter where he talks about how I refuse to apologize. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not going to apologize for being anti-war. And he wasn't just talking about Vietnam, but Yemen and Iran as well. This is what he released. Recently, I've been criticized a bit because of my opposition to war and my belief that we got to do everything possible to solve international conflict uh, without going to war. Uh, so let me be very clear. I make no apologies to anybody uh, that when I was a young man, before I was elected to anything, uh, I opposed the war in Vietnam. And I know what that war did to my generation. And when I was a member of the House, I helped lead the effort uh, against the war in Iraq, uh, because I knew that Cheney and Bush and these other folks were lying about weapons of mass destruction. I am opposed to giving the president a blank check to launch a unilateral invasion and occupation of Iraq and why I will vote against this resolution. And that war and that vote was the worst foreign policy blunder uh, in the modern history of the United States. Uh, and as a senator, I'm proud that I helped for the first time in 45 years to utilize the War Powers Act to get the United States out of an unauthorized war. Uh, in Yemen. Unfortunately, after passing in the House and the Senate, Trump vetoed that legislation. And I'll tell you something, that right now, I'm going to do everything that I can uh, to prevent a war with Iran. Because if you think that the war in Iraq was a disaster, my guess is that the war in Iran would be even worse. So let's work together and prevent that war. If people want to criticize me for that, go for it. That's okay. I don't apologize to anybody. Thank you. So that was good. I'm glad that Bernie Sanders is finally talking more about foreign policy because there's no anti-war movement in America and there's not many politicians who are speaking out against regime change. You have Tulsi Gabbard and maybe Ron Paul and Ro Khanna, you know, just a handful of people actually calling out regime change wars. So I'm glad he's doing this. Now, I want to play one more clip for you. And this is a clip from a rally at Vermont. He says largely the same thing, but I want to show you this clip as well because he takes some additional jabs, this time at the military industrial complex. And what he says here is brilliant. And we say to the military industrial complex that we will not continue to spend $700 billion a year on the military. We, we want and need a strong defense, but we do not have to spend more than the next 10 nations combined. We are going to invest in education. 
We are going to invest in affordable housing. We're going to invest in rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure. But we are not going to invest in never-ending wars. And while we are on military policy, let me say a word about foreign policy because they are obviously interrelated. Now, recently, I have been attacked in the media because of my views, actions, and votes on foreign policy issues. So let me be as clear as I can be. Yes, as a young man, along with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and many others, I marched against the war in Vietnam, a war which ravaged my generation, which left 59,000 brave young Americans dead, as well as killing over a million Vietnamese people. I make no apologies for having opposed that war. So just stop for a moment and think about how remarkable that video clip is. We have a very prominent presidential candidate speaking out against military spending and the military industrial complex in a very direct and explicit way. Like if you told me five years ago, there'd be someone running for president who would be bold enough to do this. I would have laughed at you because it seemed unfathomable at the time because it felt like, look, we're just going to spend a lot on the military industrial complex. And if you don't like that, then tough shit. But now we have someone who is taking shots directly at the military industrial complex. And it's still honestly astonishing to see. And Bernie's not the only one, right? We have Tulsi Gabbard who's doing the same thing, but you know, this is, this is great. He says, we need to take on the military industrial complex. That's incredibly bold seeing that they could very well bankroll Donald Trump, your opponent. Now, I think Bernie Sanders is smart enough to know that they're going to do that anyways, but nonetheless, to hear him say that is like music to my ears. He also says we want and need a strong defense, but we do not need to spend more than the next 10 nations combined. That is so brilliant. And I've, I've been saying that, you know, it's not like that's unique, but just to hear a presidential candidate say that is really remarkable. Now, I wish he would have said, you know, the next 10 nations combined, most of which are our allies, because it really, I think, adds another layer of the absurdity of our military spending, but it's still important. He says, we are not going to invest in never-ending wars. Again, very important. So I love this. I love that Bernie Sanders is taking what is maybe a smear attempt by the mainstream media and saying he should apologize. And he's using this to his advantage. He's saying, damn right, I'm not going to apologize because I was right about Iraq. I was right about the Vietnam War. And guess what? I'm right now. I'm right that we should end U.S. support for Saudi Arabia's genocide in Yemen. I'm right that we shouldn't intervene in Iran. So he's using this to prop himself up when it comes to credibility. And he's also, he's unapologetically coming out unequivocally against war. And that is so important. 